So, good morning and welcome to Digital Cafe. So, my name's Andrew and I'm going to share my screen with you and I'll introduce uh, Teresa and Claire. So, I'm Andrew Mills and I'm in Sh Sheffield Woodseat. So, Claire, where, where, where are you? Uh, good morning, I'm Claire from Maker Brew and I'm in Sheffield uh, High Green. And Teresa? Hi, I'm Teresa. I'm in Sheffield too at Norton. Thank you. So cool. And welcome to, he says, trying to get the PowerPoint to move on, which it's decided to lock and freeze. Oh dear. I'll have to... Okay, so this is Digital Cafe. And Digital Cafe is about trying to share knowledge. We're trying to do it in a fun way. We're trying to do it in a way that's engaging. So uh, hopefully you've got enough stamina to get to the end of this podcast stroke video thingy and obviously you can find us on the web we've got youtube we've got linkedin we've got uh, uh our own facebook uh, facebook page and so on so just flicking through these he says in a very unordered manner so yeah check us out on our website but we do have other events coming on and if you miss this event which a few may have done we have now got our own youtube channel and on that screen says 14 subscribers we're now on 24 so the number keeps rising so if you like it subscribe set the little reminder so you don't miss where we're at so if you want to find us and see all these different uh, channels again google us on uh, and put digital cafe network into google and hopefully you'll find everything that you need to know about uh, digital cafe network as i said we used to do this face to face and uh, we've got another event coming up shortly in february which is going to be the 25th and this one's going to be on the five fundamentals of social media. So if you're a business who's wanting to get your brand out there, which Claire's going to explain a bit, um, that one will be one to miss. And also this is a, a, a world first, just to let you know that at the end of uh, early part of February, the email company is on its way. So watch this space for more information. So Claire, do you remember, I, let, me, let me see if I can get a, a, my, a little video playing. Um, because we did we did an event together, didn't we? In um, we did about, um, about a year ago, wasn't it? About a year ago, yeah. So if I set my video share correctly, hopefully we get some music and uh, you get a little thing that one of the. Few... One day we might be able to do things like that again. Yeah. So, Teresa, you were saying earlier that was how, how many days was it after that event that we went into lockdown? Lockdown Eleven. one. Eleven days later. If I don't want to make a video like this of myself, <laughs> I can just make that's, a really cute one you, of Andrew. character with I me. I think that's. Hi, I'm Brad Callan, and in this. And that's me who didn't stop the video properly. Oh. So anyway, yes. So. Showcase okay, Africa. That was tough. So wonderful logo, Claire. Any, yes, well, any, any, some, some, something that we uh, something that you, you and I uh, worked on together with the with the help of uh, a few people in the team. But yeah, it was a it was a pleasure to uh, input on that and do something for the local community. And I think we had what about over hundred people to that event. I think so. Yeah, it was quite a busy day. Yeah. So just quickly run through this morning. So again, obviously little introductions in a bit. I'm going to touch on some of the cyber security issues um, that branding and just companies face on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go into, uh, obviously have a little bit further chat with you, Claire, and find out a little bit more about yourself. Um, and then over to you, Claire, so you can lead us through the world of well, where, where we all go wrong. So uh, let's so let's let's try that then. So this is, a, this is the cyber slot, I guess. Mm -hmm. So the bigger picture, well, one of the things about cybersecurity is it's, it's all about people. Um, people click on things, people follow things, people do things that they wouldn't normally do because they get told to do it via uh, an email. And often that arrives through the wonderful, uh, uh, through the wonderful term of, of, of spam. It comes into your email account. 
So it's definitely not the Monty Python style spam, which obviously was egg and spam, 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 and spam. So we did an exercise at Digital Cafe probably about a year or two ago now, um, which was called Exercise in a Box. And it was actually done by, the material comes from the National Cybersecurity Centre. And the idea behind it is that you ask a series of questions and you explore a situation, and then you actually ask uh, a few questions and then you take a like a, a poll response. And the bit that came out of it was obviously, do you make it easy for your, uh, to, to prevent these attacks in your business? And it, it was fairly neutral to be quite honest. And again, a, a, the way of uh, um, preventing it. So again, spam, well, it's taking an email, which is a wonderful tool and exploiting it. So that's really what spam is. But the bit that surprised me with the uh, exercise in a box thing was that if it came to losing your business data, uh, have you have you got a poly, have you got a, a, a system in place for recovery? Are you going to lose? Uh, is it going to cause significant disruption? And it was like it's quite scary because a lot of these people were turning around and going, "Well, that's my IT company's responsibility." And then I actually turned the question around. So, I was like, have you had that conversation with your IT company? Of which the answer was uh, generally no. Which, <laughs> so, uh, just something to think about. So again. 14.5 billion emails sent globally a day um and the problem is that you, you, can, can you get the email get spoofed and can you unsubscribe from emails and what would actually happen if you did sometimes these newsletters uh, are fake so when you click on a uh, an unsubscribe what you're actually doing is to go hey look my email is actually valid please continue spamming me or put me onto a, a onto a, a live email list um, so how do you spot a fake email? Well, one of the problems of, of, of that is it, it's, it's a lot of it is the problems of the person in the chair. Um, and it's how do you spot it? And most companies will turn around and go, hey, look, we can we can spot those. We're, we're, we're pretty good at doing that. Well, it only takes one person. And that's the it's, the security is only as good as the weakest link. So most of it all starts with 91 percent of attacks start with an email. And obviously we're talking about brands and obviously in the IT world, Microsoft is a fairly big brand and it's got some fantastic tools, great for collaboration, great for sharing, passing files backwards and forwards, sending hyperlinks to each other to say something's in my, my OneDrive account, log in with your details. Thank you very much. Someone's nicked your details. We're now in that 65% of UK businesses are using uh, some form of Office 365 because again, 365 is just a brand with multiple tools underneath it. Um, so obviously, if you are um, a problem, if you're going to try and hit a company with stuff, why not use the biggest brand out there? You, you've already got the trust of everybody. So if you click on something, there's a higher chance of getting uh, getting caught. So again, a lot of it then comes back down to what type of things will you get in? Well, if you're a reasonable size organization, you might see emails coming in from the director uh, sort of saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm out and about at the moment. I've just come out of a meeting and uh, can you just send some notes or can you send some money to this particular account? It's often money related, but not always, because quite often people are trying to get to the next level. So they're sometimes trying to get hold of the keys to some internal system. So it may be they're trying to get the keys to the Office 365 system, which means that they can go in and pull out information, which they can use then for further further activity so have you ever had that moment when you think you've clicked on something that you shouldn't have uh, so again you can train for the best you can train um for the worst or, or just pray for it <laughs> that everything's going okay so again how do you spot these things okay so if you actually go onto google and you actually put phishing quiz google you are actually greeted with a uh, a phishing quiz no cost to any of that and in doing so it's just a, a nice little 10 minute thing over a cup of coffee, maybe, or should I say tea, Claire? Um, and, in doing, <laughs> um, and in doing so, it's a way of just checking if you are going to be able to spot something or not. Um, so on those grounds, what do we do? Well, effectively, we'd look, just have a chat just to see what you're doing as a business, see what your risk is. And in doing so, look, we provide spam filters, we provide email systems, and we also offer some train around that so again if you like to fancy book a coffee then that would be great so coming back to you claire um 
fantastic um, that you've joined us. I mean, in, in, in your area, you said you're up in this sort of, is it Stocksbridge area or is it Peniston uh, area? Not, not, not quite as far out as Stocksbridge and Peniston. If you're um, at High Green, it's just uh, just above Chapel Town. If you think, it, in terms of the M1, I'm, uh, I can take my pick between Junction 35 or 36. <laughs> it's been fairly windy uh, down here this morning. Is it, is, is it fairly high, high up in your areas? Has there been much damage or high wind uh, issue? Not, uh, no damage that I've seen, but yeah, it's just wet and windy, like everybody's got at the minute, I think. Well, I went for my uh, daily exercise with a with a friend yesterday. Went through uh, Enclif Park, and the the river was nearly at flooding level of the uh, of the path, especially up in the Bingham Park one. Um, yeah. And in doing so, it was bouncing along. But again, it was wasn't anything particularly like two thousand and seven. Um, but I mean, have you been able to get out? And I said, what, what's the? Is, have you got much flooding up there? Because obviously, we just had this. Uh, no, no, fl no flooding up here because it's quite high ground. So uh, we're we're blessed, aren't we, in Sheffield? With seven hills to get up before you usually at most of the uh, urban areas but uh, yeah. yeah it's just it's just really muddy because of the saturation from the rain we've had and obviously we had the uh, six inch of snow last week didn't we so uh, it's very yeah. muddy <laughs> i was quite intrigued by your linkedin profile because it says you're right. the, the, you're the, the chief brewmaker and brand expert so what's so what's, yes. your, what's your favorite drink could it be um, raspberry raspberry tea uh, raspberry tea is all right, but uh, I, I prefer my, my normal um, PG or Tetley. I, I usually go for. I'm not, I don't like builders tea, so I, I should probably like Yorkshire tea, but it's a little bit strong for me. I understand you you do a podcast called uh, Raspberry Tea. Um, I do. Is, it's uh, yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit more. Is it something that people can listen to over a cup of tea? Absolutely. Uh, it's a collaboration myself and Claire Taylor at Raspberry Flamingo. So that's the name. Claire runs Raspberry Flamingo and Maker Brew for me is tea, so Raspberry Tea. Uh, it was uh, some of our quirky personality. Uh, episodes are about 20 to 40 minutes on average. Uh, absolutely grab a drink, have your, have your break or 11s or whatever you want. And we, we talk about all kinds of things, some from the law of attraction, the universe, first client meetings. We've talked about social media. We've even talked about would you even consider marriage if divorce wasn't an option? That's a, that's, a, that's a very broad thing. So, so Claire, I mean, I'm also interested in, in, in the business name because you've got Make a Brew. So what, what, what's yes. the story behind that then? Where'd you? Uh, well, I've had businesses before. I've come up with several different names and things. I didn't want this one to be called my name. I wanted it to be uh, <clears throat> more of a, an agency um, appearance. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it was just something I'd, I'd been brainstorming ideas and I just spoke to the dog like he usually does said oh let's make a brew I was like aha light bulb moment because that's just part of my language um it's a very warm and welcoming uh, practice certainly in the UK maybe more so in the north of England that you offer a drink at the start of a meeting or greeting somebody and that's how all good relationships start ah, okay so for those who don't know um in in your own words what what, what is what's a design agency is it something to do with dressers and things <laughs> no, the well design is broad and long. There's lots of areas, but I am a I've been a graphic designer for a pushing 25 years now. And I've diversified through my career into areas of marketing, project management, websites, social media online, but branding's always been part of what I do and it's my favorite thing to do. So Make a Brew is an agency in terms of it is run solely by me and I do the most of the work, but I collaborate with partnerships with people such as Claire at Raspberry Flamingo for copywriting, mm -hmm. uh, website developers, people like that. So I can deliver an agency service without that premium price. Excellent. So we've, again, what we're going to do is to, is, is to kick, out, kick off. So what I'll do, mm -hmm. I'll pass, um, pass my screen share or stop my screen share and then you can pick it up. And uh, and then obviously you can you can take us through the world of uh, um, <clears throat> of sort of where, where we where we go wrong with branding and uh, what, what we need to do about it I guess no problem so here we go then let's turn that off and that should be over to you a smooth transition there we go fantastic we do, we do our best <laughs> so <coughs> building your brand. So there's a there's a little me. That's one of, that's one of the things that I use as part of my branding. It's a it's a Lego version of me because I like to use Lego, and we'll we'll touch on that further in the presentation. Um, so firstly, why is why is branding important for your business? In fact, what is branding? 
brand is your it's your whole image and um what your customers feel about you the experience you have for example if you go to we've got meadow hall in our area so you go in a shopping center and you might go in john lewis for example you expect a certain type of service the way that the staff speak to you the way they dress where the stores laid out the signage the way that the wording's written the mess the type of tone of voice of the messaging or you might go into uh, say costco stack them high sell them cheap buy lots at once they've got different sort of personalities They've got different look and feel because you're buying different things. So that's just an example how two companies that sell some of the similar products can position themselves to be different. Um, so the, the Costco, you've got the bright colours and the bold and it's very, very American because it's American owned and it's about buying things in bulk and getting things on discount. A lot of shops use it to buy their stock and things from, whereas John Lewis is a bit more upmarket and a little bit more premium, and it's very much based on service. Mm. So your branding is everything from what you see as a customer when you hear about a company, when you walk through a door, to buying a service and a product, to the aftercare. And it's about the feeling that you're left with and what you think about any business after you've dealt with them. So I always talk about brand in its entirety, like an iceberg. It's been a successful analogy that I've used for quite some time now. So if you think about above the water, they're the tangibles. So they're the things that you can see, hear, feel, touch, experience. They're such as your logos, they're probably the prime one. So a lot of people mistake the fact that a logo is a brand. Well, it's not, it's just a part of it, a very crucial part of it, and probably a corner pin of it, because it impacts everything else that is to do with the brand. You've also got your website. Now, branding can affect and impact how a website might look, how the content on it's written, and what the customer journey is from using that website. It's about your social media presence. So when you put yourself out there on a video, uh, are you speaking in the same tone of voice that you're using when you write an email or when you write your brochures or leaflets or any other sort of publicity communication materials? Um, if you've got a team and you've got staff, do the staff speak and act and behave in the same way that the company wants them to so that the brand experience is delivered consistently by everybody that's connected to it so your customers get used to it and expect it and that's what will build it and grow it because you'll attract more of the people that want to buy from that company. So that's why it comes to customer service and all your communications, whether they be voice, written or anything like that. But what a lot of people don't understand with brand, that it's very much driven by what's under the water. And that's the strategy. So that is your purpose. So why do you do what you do? beyond making money because we're all in business to make a living we've got to pay bills keep a roof over our head pay staff things like that but why do you do what you do are you passionate about it are you doing something different does it make a real difference to a certain group of people in, and that be your target audience what's the vision for your business where can you see your business usually in five ten or twenty years a lot of people i work with we start at the five because it's a lot easier to get your head around 20 years down the line it's like well who knows what's going to happen in 20 years? Will we still have websites? Will we have flying cars and all the back to the future type, type stuff? It's your mission. So how are you going to get to that vision? What's the journey going to be? How are you going to be able to achieve what you want? The values. How are you going to behave so that you can meet that vision and you can deliver your purpose and why it is? So for me, my business is very much me. So I don't have to put my, right, this is business head and this is my head. It is one and the same because I run the business on a very friendly, open, um, I'm here to help. I once did a, a little survey among some friends and said, what, what do you think I would have on my headstone? And they all said, how can I help? So that's what I like to do is help people and explain and understand things like this, such as branding. And I find that a simple analogy like this can make something that might be a little bit scary and overwhelming come back down to actually well 
there's a process to it. And as long as I mm. have some clarity and focus on a lot of those items, it does make a real difference to everything that you do above the water in the tangibles. If you're very clear about why you do what you do and what your values are and where you're going, it's far easier to communicate that to who your customers are. So you should know who your ideal customers are. They called your ICA, they called your ideal client, the buyer persona. They've got lots of different names for those things. But who is the perfect type of person or business for you to work with? Who are the people you can help? Do they have a similar set of problems? You need a clear picture of that. Who are the competitors? Who else is doing something that you do? Um, are they doing it differently? Is there nobody out there? Are you going to be the market leader and then people will follow you? But then how are you going to stay in front of that competition and how are you going to maintain your difference? So whilst there might be 10 companies that do what I do, they don't do it the same way as me because they're not me. So you've got to make sure that you can communicate that difference and you're clear about who are the right people that you want to work with. Who are your best customers? Who do you have most fun with when you're working? Because we spend a lot of time in work and a lot of time in business. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're clear on your purpose and you're doing something that you're really passionate about, then you should enjoy it. And you should enjoy working with the people that want that sort of help. So that's in an essence, a big, the big picture of branding. Think about it as an iceberg under the water and below the, and above the water. But if you look at it then mapped into a more structured brand, if you look at it in, in like in layers of a cake, so down the left-hand side is where the strategy comes in, and then you've got the substance side, so that's where the purpose, the vision, the mission, and the values are, because they're going to drive the, 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 the real, why, why is your business there? Why do you do what you do? And where are you going, and how are you going to do it? And then there's the positioning, which is what, again, those two things together help the other side. So it's the audience or the customers, the competitors, and again, the difference. And then on the right-hand side is the above the water, it's the expression. So you've got your, your persona or the personality, what's the voice, the communication. So what's the messaging? What are the things that you talk about, the way that you talk about it? What kind of content do you put out there? Do you do blogs? Do you do emails? Do you do vlogs or videos? But how do you speak in those? What kinds of things do you do how do you present them mm. you've got your business name or product name you've got your taglines or strap lines or things like that that can because make a brew is quite obscure you don't know what make a brew is so i use taglines and descriptions to say what actually make a brew is but the fact that you don't know what it is from seeing it off the bat opens the question make a brew why, why is it called that where does it come from what did you do it for so we you then get engaged in a conversation now, for somebody and my business being in a creative industry, that fits. But let's say if it was an accountant or a law firm, you wouldn't you, you need to do something that's a little bit more obvious what it is, because people people need specific services, whereas things that are creative, we can build anything. We use the same elements, but things never look the same. They don't work the same. They're not for the same business. They're not for the same customers. Um, and then you've got the identity system so that logo is going to be used on printed material like business cards or the banners that you've got behind you it might be used on things online like videos or websites or social media posts uh it might be on vehicles signage anything like that so all that is a visual identity that that logo is part of and then you've got the, the presence. So that's the people, the, is it uniforms? Is it the, the customer service? Are you, do you do um, response time? If somebody leaves you a voicemail, do you get back to them same day? What's your practice, the way that you work, the way that you operate? So that gives you a map of the whole of the brand. Now, some of those things will be more familiar than others. Some of those things you might do already. If you've got a brand strategy, it very much links to your business strategy, but they are two different things. So your goals for your business, such as what's your financial targets? What are your plans for maybe exiting the business? How long are you hoping to be there? Are you going to sell it? Are you going to franchise it? To achieve those business goals, having a brand strategy that's going to help you get there to communicate that is what makes it successful. What if you've got one already? 
when was the last time you looked at it? Some of these things need revisiting. For example, you should re-audit or re-examine your customer's audience. You should re-examine your competitors. You should be maintaining that difference or looking at different ways to communicate what it is you do or how things might be different. For example, at the moment, we're in this global pandemic. For some sectors, business is extremely tough because they're not able to do something online. They rely on bricks and mortar and footfall. So are they still communicating to their clients that they're still there? Mm. It's really important to do things like that. So that positioning side where you've got the audience and the competitive difference, really want you should be reviewing that or taking a look at it every sort of quarter, maybe three months, unless you're engaging in something new, like you're about to launch a different line to your business with the email sort of focused area. So you're going to look at your com- customers and you're going to look at competitors because they might be slightly different to your main business services. Your purpose should not really change unless something really big happens. For example, you merge with another business, then you need to look at the purpose again. Is it all in line? But usually you'd, you'd think about before a merger. The vision for the business, is it still going to go to a different same place? this pandemic could this actually put you off track so your vision might change of where you want the business to go you've actually that the pivoted word that's like the new black that lots of people are using but has that change you've had to make in your business to keep moving forward changed what you actually want the business to be in that 5 10 or 20 years Mm -hmm. so that's when you might need to relook at the vision and that side of things but generally once you've done those they're kind of there for the long-term plan and then the expression side's more about maintenance, making sure you're consistent, making sure everything's the same, such as if you use a certain shade of blue, is it the same blue every time you see it, whether it's online or offline or in a vehicle or in a uniform? It's, it's all about consistency. Like you can, for example, the McDonald's brand, you don't need to see the word McDonald's. You can see the, they call it the golden arches, but you can see that yellow M and you know exactly what it is because of the brand recognition, the consistency and the repetition that they've used and built up with it. Um, moving on. So how, how do you develop your branding in your business? Well, firstly, if you haven't got a strategy, I highly recommend you get one and you do one. There's lots of information on my website about how you build one if, you, if you're wanting to explore it without actually speaking to somebody outside if you don't know how to do it yourself there's a few pointers on how to start um your identity the strategy comes first and the identity comes second normally but sometimes businesses set up and they get an identity or they get a logo and they've not done the strategy work so you can do it in reverse but that's more about making sure that you're on the right track if this is our purpose and what we're all about and there are customers, does that identity appeal to those customers and does it communicate what we're about? It's mm. kind of a, a sense check really if you're doing it in reverse, but it can be done. So then that poses the question, do we need to rebrand? Is it still right? Rebranding, possibly have you hit a business milestone? Have you done a merger? Have you done things like that? But also don't just do a rebrand just because your nearest competitor's done one. You need to, if you're thinking about a rebrand, it's got to be for the right reasons. So it's either aligning it to your strategy and your positioning, making sure it's the right thing for the way that your business works and those customers, and it differentiates you. But also you need to think about, don't be too different. If you're, like, say, I'll go back to the uh, legal example. You wouldn't expect a firm of solicitors that were, say, a sizable company. I'm going to use Erwin Mitchell as a, they're a national brand, they're quite big. Now, if their brand identity colours were fluorescent yellow, it doesn't sit right for the kind of work they do. Would you trust that brand if they looked too different? So whilst you've got to stand out and be different, there's there's always parameters within each industry sector or whatever your services or whatever the customers you want to attract. Mm. 
Mm. So identity, th those are the two main things that you need to get right. So building your brand, the whole point of why I'm talking to you today. How do you build a brand? Well, for a start, you need to get the, the basics right. You need, you need the, to at least have an idea of the who, what, why, where and how. And an identity that you can use consistently. Because then it's about promoting it. So, again, user experience. When somebody comes to your website, the way that it's written and that content's written, would that be the same as if somebody walked into, if you've got an office or you've got a shop front and the staff speak to them? Is it the same type of language? Is it the same look? Have you got office furniture or some signage that looks the same as the logo on the website? It's amazing how many companies have a website that looks nothing like their social media platform, that looks nothing like their vehicles and their vans. If you think about that as an example, I've recently done some work with a, a painter and decorator. It was a smaller business. He'd got his social media. He'd got one image on that. He'd got his website. He'd got one image on that. He'd got his checker trade and he'd got um, trust the trader, different on each of those. And then he'd got a van, totally different again. And I said, the problem with that is if you're out on a job and you've got your van, people see that. If they then go and check you out online to find out who you are, to get your address, to get your phone number, if they didn't quite see it on your van, and that website and that social media doesn't look the same as the van, that's a different business they've seen. It's not yours. So consistency is imperative. Even if you're a sole trader, you can be a builder, a plumber, a hairdresser, or whatever. No, you've got to be consistent, even if it's wrong. Just do it consistently and you're going to be better off than somebody that's so different and uh, sporadic and all over the place. Your content and your social media marketing. Have you got a plan? Is there a theme to it? I won't go too deep into that because that's Rick's specialty and he's talking to you next month. But does it look the same? Do your images look like they're your company? Again, what are we going to go for? Um, so now we're going to go on accountant. So an accountant, you can get quirky personality accountants. My, my accountant is very much uh, quirky and bright and whatever. And there's some that are more traditional and old fashioned and, and that's what their personality is. And that's absolutely fine. But their social media content or their digital content has got to look like they do. So if you are a traditional professional and maybe I'm going to use the word um, experienced and old fashioned, but not in a bad sense. That's just the character that that business wants. They start using bright colors and working more like my environment's very relaxed. You, you it, it doesn't sit right. It, you might not be able to know what it is that's wrong, but as a customer, there's, there's disjoint. You've got to make sure everywhere that you put your messaging or a picture or an image, it's the right image. Mm -hmm. so you wouldn't use a really black and white moody and a bit of a, a, a dark gothic horror movie sort of picture when you're a beautician because it's about being light and fresh and airy see there's a the imagery comes into it as well so when you meet me in person and Andrew you and I have met in person many times and you're now talking to me on zoom I hope the experience is no different you see my personality, you see the way that I speak, the way that I am. I'm no different whether I'm online or on the phone or in person. And that rolls out across the business as well. Every time I communicate things about the business, I do it in, it's in that warm and friendly but professional way. Signage. If you've got a building or an office, is the sign the same as it is on a vehicle or a van? If you're using it and is it on a uniform or a cap or some piece of? Again, it's, it's about consistency. Your business cards and anything else that's printed, leaflets. Is it, have you got a, a cheap job from Vistaprint and they're, they're a bit papery and <laughs> the card's not very good quality? And, and you're, uh, let's say, a, a high-end law firm or something like that, and you give that business card, it's, it, it, again, it doesn't sit right. The, the thickness of the paper and the, what things are printed on also matters. My, my things that I've got printed, I've got some little leaflets, they, they've got a soft touch finish on them. So they're touchy feely because I'm a very like a warm and friendly and tactile person. And again, it's another layer of how you can communicate what that brand is. So basically they're building the brand 
it's knowing who you are and what you do and why you do it, who your customers are and how you make things different. Having a, an identity system, so there's a logo and there's the colours and there's the fonts and there's the things, and then it's about using it consistently. You say, what's the, uh, the phrase? Content is king, but consistency is queen. If you can keep those two things in mind, and like I say, even if it might not be right what you've got, but if you do it consistently, you're going to stand yourself in decent stead. And then you, if you review the strategy and you look at your customers and you might think actually what we've got is not right. We did start off on a shoestring budget and we used a piece of graphic off the internet and 15 other companies have got it as well. So now we want something that's more unique to us. Then great, go for it. But you need to find the right company to work with that's going to understand you and your business. And ultimately... Your identity has got to be something that fits you and represents you and that you like and you're in love with it. But ultimately, the design company is designing something that's attracting your customers. So they, they work through you, but the strategy has got to be all you. So any questions? Uh, that, yeah, I have actually. <laughs> that was positive, I guess. Fire away. I always find it's either you get loads of questions or you get none because you've covered yes. everything so well. <laughs> so <laughs> I think you've unlocked a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of questions. I suppose, obviously, when you're working with different businesses, um, as you rightly said, some, some businesses have probably got a logo or something that they've started off with, with a very simple graphic or a very simple picture that they've nabbed from somewhere and, uh, and they're using as yep. part of their uh, identity. Mm -hmm. um, if someone's got a little bit more money to spend, or or even if someone's just got a small budget, where where would you mm -hmm. where would you start? Because you've covered a massive area with this with this sort of whole thing of the overview, the consistency, the the above the iceberg. But I would I would hello. I would always start with the strategy side. Mm -hmm. So why why do you want to change it? Why is it not right? Because you've looked at who your customers are and what your messaging is and why you're different. Mm. So you look at those things and then you kind of rewind it. So always start with the strategy. And that's a simple, I, I talk about purpose, vision, mission and values, but mm -hmm. your purpose is the, um, who you, is your why, why do you do it? So to simplify it, there's, it, if you go to my website, makeabrew.co.uk, there's a brand new website there. It's just launched this week. I'm, I'm, I'm fully launching it tomorrow. Okay. Um, there's, there's information on there that will ask you those questions so you can get it online for free. If you want to go a little bit further, I've got a, a, a PDF that's how to build a digital brand. So you can get that for free as well. You just have to give me your email address and I'll give you loads and loads of branding tips and hints and things going forward there again, all free. But always start with a strategy because then you can look at, well, what have we got and why is it wrong? Well, we did have a shoestring budget and we got something that we nicked off the internet and we chopped a bit off that corner and we did that. And now we've got a little budget. But before you decide where you're going to spend the money, do the homework. Mm -hmm. Because then when you spend the money, you're going to know why you're doing it and who it's for and how it's going to fit in your marketplace, but also how is it going to be different? And then you'd be better positioned to rebrand. So new logo you might change colors you might keep colors you might get an, uh, a custom font or you might do all of those things that are the the visual pretty things and usually the most exciting part of the project but you've got to do the homework before you do anything visual mm. I've, obviously <coughs> it was, i was went down to the office the other day and i was checking the post and i got this sort mm -hmm. of envelope that came through with this sort of strange bump in it uh open it up and someone had sent me a, a data mills pen uh, oh. that same same colour as, uh, as, as the thing, it's, it just said data mills on it. And I thought, mm -hmm. I like it, it wrote well. Um, I thought, yeah, I could, I, could, I could see some merit in that. But I just thought it just has a name. Is it is it better mm -hmm. to carry things with names and numbers? And and again, pen, pens, are they sort of ten a penny? Because I was, I was given some time ago, uh, there was one company and what they were giving away wasn't a pen or a, or a lanyard or whatever. They gave away mm -hmm. a ruler. And that's been on my okay. desk for about five years, where I'm guessing wow. the pen would have been and would would run out and it would get binned. So is mm -hmm. a, is a, is is a 
anything that you sort of think, ah, these are sort of quite novel ideas and or what, what, what is the most novel idea that you've seen? Uh, well, uh, one of my clients and a good friend of mine, uh, Dana Whiteland, runs Brocco Branded, and she can do all kinds of creative things and th whatnot. But that what, what you mentioned there is called lumpy mail, um, where people have they're prospecting. Um, they obviously are a, a merchandising company who can create branded gifts and products. Um, good way to get business for them, because you might have thought, oh, great, I want some data mills pens i can then give them to my clients or i've got a an exhibition or something coming back up coming up where they can be a freebie and a giveaway um personally because my business is called maker brew i've sent out a pair of tea bags and some biscuits that have got my branding on so have a tea break have some tea and biscuits and have a think about this or do you fancy a chat um it's about thinking of things that are representative of you and your business are they useful are they going to make your customers think oh that's stopped me in the tracks i need to speak to that company or oh that's a good idea are they going to share it are they going to put on social media look what i've just received a lot of people do it it's called unboxing so yes i think lumpy mail as a marketing tactic is great as what it is, it could be anything like I could I could send bits of Lego out because I talk about building brands like using Lego. Every brand I build has got the strategy elements I went through and they have the identity elements like you have a logo and you have a font and you have a ta um, colours. But the combination of how you put them together is like building a Lego. You've got the bricks and the elements mm. but and it's creative. I could build a, a dog, I could build a house, I could build a car could build anything but so businesses building brands I, I used lego as a metaphor and a creative way of well we might have got the same box of bricks but the the result at the end is going to be different because all the business is different so lego is something i could send out uh, a little desk toy or something like that but like i said ruler was different to you because you probably don't get many rulers but you might get 100 pens in a year and mm -hmm. a pen when it's run out unless it's a really nice pen like a Parker and it's a refillable, once you've used it, pst, gone. But a company's probably not going to send out Parker pens or something like that because they've got a higher price on them. And then that becomes a risky campaign for them. But if they're going to do it in a small amount to people they're courting, if you like, then it might be worth them spending a little bit more money and if, you, if you've got a, a Data Mills branded pen or you've got a park pen in a nice box, what what would your response have been for that difference? Mm. Yeah, no, I can see how it's, yeah, it's, I like the, I like the strategy of sort of building it up. And again, as you say, that the presence uh, above the iceberg um, and, and, and mm -hmm. I, I can I can see what you meant by the, the consistency. Cause like, yeah, I've, I've mm -hmm. seen plenty of businesses which have, again have had that disjointed, that disjointed view and, the man with the van yeah that the recognition mm. that you, you see the van you go to the website it doesn't bear any relevance to uh to the company and you're sort of you're scratching your head looking on google yeah, is it is it or is it not I'm not sure mm. um so mm. you just move on to a company that, that does that does carry that so claire um you mentioned about uh, a pdf thing and um yeah. so if people obviously you've, you've got some contact details on the screen there if we were putting this uh -huh. Obviously, we're recording this, and we're going to put it up onto the uh, onto our YouTube channel. Um, yes. If, uh, if someone's really interested in sort of exploring a little bit more with yourself, um, yeah. obviously the contact details on there, and obviously you mentioned about this PDF and this thing. Is there anything that we could probably put in the comment bit at the bottom? You know, like you sometimes see on a on a, a video, click on here, and it takes you through to different things. Is there anything particularly that uh, any little uh, like half hour consultation things, 15 minute phone calls, whatever it might be. Yeah, absolutely. Like I say, if it, the, be, the best thing is uh, share the web link. On my website, you can download that uh, how to build a digital brand PDF if you want it. Uh, you can also book a brew for 30 minutes or an hour. Uh, I will happily speak to anybody that contacts us through through yourselves or following this video for 30 minutes. They can ask any questions that they might not have got the opportunity to ask because we're recording today. 
Um, I will, I will answer, if contact me directly, I'd be on LinkedIn, ask any questions. I will help you the best I can. Then if you've got a clear idea of what you're wanting to do, hopefully that puts you in a better stead. Brilliant. Well, thank you no problem. Yeah, thanks ever so much for your time this morning. Um, and again, I hope it's, uh, it's, it's been useful for Sales from Trees, I'm sure. Um, and, and, so, and I guess moving, moving forward, hopefully it's going to be useful for people who, t uh, who drop in on this. Um, so, yeah, if you could just unshare your screen and then I'll just sort of tell people about the next Digital Cafe event or two. And, uh, no problem. And then, we'll, then, we'll, then we'll call it a wrap, I guess. Is that, is that the phrase you're using, Podland? Uh, in your podcast terms of the uh, our, 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 po our podcast closes and it's time for a brew <laughs> well maybe we should try that in a few in a, in a few moments then so if i share that so again um the next the next event that we've got is going to be on the five fundamentals of social media so again please go on to uh eventbrite and that's where we tend to list them and in doing so you've We've got loads of things. So thank you very much. And I think it's now time for a brew. <laughs>